it's the friendly fire show episode 170 for the end of april 2021 i am one of your hosts steve from survivor i'm your other host ben from survivor and we're back after a planned break i'm gonna say because you went on holidays so yeah we forgot to tell everyone we're going on break like most shows do but you just kind of assume with us when we're not here for a few weeks someone's on holiday something happened uh so you traveled domestically of course but that must be weird and new and exciting yeah it was actually because um the significant other is fully vaccinated but you know Mm. uh, i like the rest of us us normal australians under the age of 50 won't be vaccinated until like 2022 the rate that it's going um but we went up to newcastle and back over two weeks and kind of just stayed at little coastal towns and and rural towns and you kind of forget that some of these places like covid's not really like impacted their like town at all and it's kind of like any other day which was strange um that's what it's like here basically well yeah there you go melbourne's getting like that now um for better or for worse i still get freaked out like it was it was the weirdest thing just going places and there being people around and i was still kind of keeping my distance and stuff but like no masks it it was just it was weird so uh, it was nice but um, terrifying. And then mm. I got like a little bit of a sinus like thing happening at the end of the trip. And I'm like, oh God, like, I know it's not COVID. I just don't want anybody to see me like sniffling or like having a cough or something. So it was terrifying. Um, but other than that, it was really good. I got to preview two games while I was on holidays mm. by accident. Um, As is what normally happens when something else comes up is when the new game opportunities come up. So that's pretty, things are back to normal. But in this, well, but in this post-COVID world, the previews weren't going to an office to play a game. It was like, watch this video. So I could do that kind of thing. Um, For the most part, I also forgot how like horrible connectivity is in rural Australia. I'm like, oh, Mm. I'll have 4G. I had like maybe a bar of 4G if I had my phone like up in the air, like standing on a chair, like being on the right place. Um, But it worked out in the end. What did you do while I was not here, Ben? uh nothing nothing i didn't do anything uh exactly the same yeah that's it i don't know what i've been doing since you've not been there did you go to a footy game surely you went to a footy yeah i've game. done that we get to go to 100 percent capacity in two weeks so we're going to be in like a 50,000 stadium with someone on either side of you and in front of you and behind you like how it used to be the old times now there's like the people you know around you and there's like a normally like a gap uh but you do have to wear masks there. It's like the only place in South Australia the whole time we've had to wear masks because of football. So people are confused about it. That's probably a good thing though. Like, Yeah, everyone does it. I have to admit, I mean, so outside, as soon as you get out of the stadium, the masks come off. It's kind of like there. I do get it. There has to be a point somewhere where it changes and, and that's it. Uh, people have decided, but inside people seem to do it. So they want to be able to go. Big problem I found is... Uh, one, I mean, normally I don't drink that much of the football because it's so expensive, but there was a time when I was like, all right, I'm getting a beer. Uh, our seats were like double A in level five or something. So right at the back up the stairs, get the beer, mask is on. You know how they feel I'm so tall and you've got to like sip it a bit before you can go up the stairs? Yeah. I went to do that, beard in my mask. Like, Come on. <laughs> Just such a habit. <laughs> anyway. You're like that TikTok of the guy who was like eating noodles yeah. but he forgot yeah except it was beer it's, i like it it's a I like habit it. yeah so the only time i had to wear a mask the entire trip we were in Haynesville, which is near lakes entrance in victoria and there's like all these little islands and there's literally a ferry that takes you it's like a, a one minute ferry stop it like goes from one side of the lake to the other side of the lake like hmm. you could you could probably swim it faster than the ferry goes um but because it's public transport you had to wear a mask and like this woman just decided she couldn't be bothered. So like, it was that like clearly an empty coffee cup that she's probably had for like the last hour, but just didn't throw it away. But because she had a coffee cup in her hand, she didn't have to put on the mask for like the full minute. Ah, Wow. The old loophole. You got around the system. Mm. Um, Do you want to talk about your AFL jersey problem with port and the in the stripes no it's it's not really football related it's a big thing eddie mcguire is a big douche basically which is standard and he somehow still runs the afl despite being ousted for being like a racist prick he still has power like mate you've been like pushed out and cancelled pipe down anyway we won't talk about that there is an afl update coming that's a that's a game related thing 
AFL Evolution 2 is getting a DLC pack for the new teams, I think May 7th or something like that. So classic AFL game. It is getting an update well after the season started. That is a very AFL game. Anyway, we'll have something on that if it actually comes out. I'll get you to do that because I didn't clearly know, obviously. Yeah. I think I might be the only person who doesn't know. They basically just tweet these things at like midnight on a Sunday. Nice. Sneak them in. Yeah. Mm. Did we talk about It Takes Two before? I can't remember. Yeah, God. We, we did because well, you and Matt played it. Oh, that was the uh, preview. Same thing, oh, though. So, okay. Okay. Same we'll thing. So I'm not talking about that. And it's probably there. Uh, give, give me a quick rundown. Um, I don't want to now. Okay. Uh, right. No, I do. Uh, two player co op game, it. mandatory mm. co op game. Um, it's good. Like in the review, I like I really liked what I played. I thought I played a majority of it, and I think I was wrong because Matt, like, if you're playing with someone and you're dependent on two people's schedules, like, sorry, crunch time for a review. Like, it's not going to happen if one of those people is on call at a hospital. That's just how it works. Um, so we're still playing it. It's, um, very long and drawn out at times like different mechanics each level and stuff but like i'm kind of feeling like i'm uh, kind of done with this which i guess is a good okay. thing to be playing it in like small sporadic chunks because then you don't get as over it as quickly but i can't imagine playing it in any expedited amount of time but it is good despite me like just sounding like i've stood over top of it and taken a dump on it i actually do enjoy it but yeah like in in small little chunks and just go read the review if you want more information. Because I think we have talked about this and now I just feel we stupid have. for bringing it up. I think, yeah. I think that's what you need from any co-op game like that is a, a game that can play to small chunks or smashed out in one afternoon. It can't be like a 10 hour plus game. It needs to be five hours max. Uh, the most recent co-op game I played was the Gears of War 5 DLC, which I can't remember what it was called. Five Busters. That's it. That was okay. We played it in two sittings. Uh, if it was any longer, I probably wouldn't have finished it. So I think that's about the right size for a co-op style game these days because I just didn't have the time to play through a whole game. You and I played through Halo 3 not that long ago. We did that during COVID and we meant to go play ODST, but we, and we will, we will. Eventually. We yeah, that's pretty we'll, short too. We'll play Halo Infinite by the time we get around to it, but hey, whatever, yeah. it'll, it'll happen. Great. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard to play. Basically, it's hard to find the time to play an entire co-op game. So that's always the problem. Yes. Sorry, I, did, I, I just kind of went into like, this is what I've been playing. What have you been playing? Anything of note that you want to talk about or no? Uh, well, uh, we normally get to this at the end in delays because I will skip to it anyway. I basically don't play DLC ever, but I was going to play the Valhalla DLC because I looked up when it was coming out and it was coming out at the end of April. Then it got delayed and it's been delayed into like Resident Evil time. So now I'll never play it. It needed to come out when it was going to come out. So I looked through my backlog. I reached the point where I had nothing to play and it was like, I need to start something that I haven't started, like that big pile that you get that you just haven't even touched. So I picked one at random and I played, uh, started Immortals Phoenix Rising a couple of days ago. I was going to suggest that, but I don't have to anymore. It's Yay. pretty good. Uh, it is very, I think you said it's basically Breath of the Wild's influence, but more of a B-grade game and it kind of knows it very, you know, narrated by Zeus. So it's more story orientated than I thought it was going to be, but I really like it. The puzzles are good. The combat's decent. Um Again, I'm not going to play a DLC. Every time I start it, it's like, hey, did you know there's three DLC packs? I don't care game. I'm barely into the main thing. But yeah, I'm quite enjoying it. it. It seems like the type of game that should have come out like now or like March, April, yeah. because it just snuck in at the end of the new consoles. It's it's a cross-gen game, but it's a, like one of the first games I'm playing that is actually made for Series X in the cross-gen sense, not just back that. And it's so stylized uh, that it doesn't, it's not like trying to be realistic yeah. looking. So it looks good regardless. Yes. But I think a lot, of, a lot of people would have missed it because it came out in that like December period when there was heaps of stuff going on. And if it had come out like now and it was actually delayed slightly, I think it would have got a lot more coverage, a lot more attention. It just kind of got forgotten and is already discount bin. So definitely worth looking at, especially I know PlayStation has some stuff coming up. Xbox still doesn't really have anything. Besides multi-platform games, so definitely worth looking at. And it's on Switch as well, I think. And it probably yeah, runs it is. okay on Switch because it, it is that stylized style that doesn't need super beefy hardware, probably. Yeah, I don't know why Ubisoft literally put out Valhalla, Watch Dogs mm. Legion, and this game. They're all huge open world yeah, like games within at the same a month. time. Yeah. What are you Crazy. doing? Um, Matt really, really, really likes Immortals. Um, the DLC though. Um, he's not been crazy about it, just kind of seems like extra padding of puzzles and stuff. 
one of the DLC, which I thought sounded really cool, it's called something about the Eastern Realms, and it's like a different hero. It's like a Chinese mythology. Is that the one that just came out? On it? One came I, out like this week. I think it was something. number two, because Matt's already yeah. played it. And he's like, I liked it, but it was kind of just like a random like Chinese character skin over Phoenix, mm. where he's spent like hours and hours and hours investing into Phoenix and like caring about Phoenix. It's like, oh, here, play with this guy instead. It's like, eh, okay. And like, it's not, it's a different theme, but like, it's the same kind of puzzles and stuff so it's like uh, it just feels weird that's okay well, that's, I don't think that's me that. paraphrasing but i don't know i think the main game is worth it it's that that i mean there's a lot of combat but a lot of it is puzzle solving as well like the vaults are exactly shines from shrines i should say from breath of the wild exactly the same thing and that type of puzzle solving isn't really on playstation or xbox not to the extent that it's on nintendo hardware and they've just copied the same formula and it's it's great like they're some of them are kind of annoying, but most of them are pretty good and well-designed. And you kind of, when it triggers, like, oh, that's what I'm trying to do, it's good. So a type of game that you don't get a lot would be perfect on Game Pass. Hint, hint, mm. Xbox, the constant rumors that Ubisoft is coming, but it never seems to happen. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's worth looking at. And like, weirdly, because I did it ahead of, I did it like pre-release review. Mm. Like I didn't invest into any of the like verticality or like horizontal dash abilities. And Ubisoft kind of got mad at me for it. But then I was solving puzzles, kind of like breaking the game. Not not like breaking the game, but like thinking outside of the box and like doing weird things to achieve the same result as if like I just used like my like go high up in the air special ability, which I I kind of like. I like Um, that. I'm like 10, 12 hours in and I haven't got that ability yet because I wasted all my coins and other stuff. I do have the dash forward. and so there's a few times I only realized it was a thing when I did like one of the time trial, like the time capped, whatever challenges. And it just gives you a bunch of stuff that you don't normally have. And it's like, I just died a bunch of times until I realized, oh, I've got this power I don't normally have. Oh, it shoots you up in the air. That would be useful all these other times. I will say that's a criticism. It doesn't tell you what to do anywhere near good enough because it's got the classic Ubisoft map bloat where it's just got stuff littered all over the map. And it doesn't even tell you this is a main mission, this is a side mission. It's kind of like you need to pick what to do next, but just tell me which is the main mission. Like it's it's garbage of that, which is a classic Ubisoft problem, but it's in trying to be that Zelda style, you can go where you want. On top of the Ubisoft style map, it, it's a clash that doesn't work. So they could yeah. do better there. And it has like a weird Nintendo handholding of like, oh, you shouldn't be here. You shouldn't do this right now. Not, yeah. not the way so you it are. does that. And but then I, I did it anyway. And I'm like, ah, shut up game. I'm i'm my own man yeah it did yeah it does do that anyway what else is what's coming up um i haven't played anything uh oh that's not true i played some fallout 76 because i'm determined to get to a thousand gamer score uh Ooh. we did so you you talked about it last time i think you're um not re-review mm. but you're kind of like revisiting revisit uh, yeah, piece yeah. is there because i i kind of agree with that mentality not kind of agree i do agree with that mentality they put it out and it was a shit place when they put it out and it's come a long way, but like that shouldn't excuse the product that was offered up at the very start. So yay for that. Um, Locked and loaded is out now. So you get two camp slots. You can have one active at a time. Um, so you can have two. That's cool. There's like a special like respecking, what do they call it? Like a punch card system. So if you like put all your perk points into one, kind of build and you don't like it for daily ops or something you can like basically just re-roll your character and put attributes and cards to things which is something which is good um and then there's like a new season with extra rewards and things so that's that um the things that i didn't play but i got to watch videos of uh the first was the apex legends legacy uh update which is the game's newest season season nine and that brings a new character called wow. valkyrie yeah i know like season <laughs> nine it's like survivor like it's at season like 37 you're like what oh god um, i gotta be honest all these multiplayer games are like it's season whatever i don't care about that at all like cod keeps updating and it's like look at season four that needs to be on the tile now I don't care about that. Like, <laughs> what define a season? It's all the same to me, anyway. Well, this season, air quotes, it just brings a new game mode that's permanent called Arenas. I'm like, Legacy? No, it's called Arenas. It's like a 3v3 thing. It's kind of like Valorant or Gun Game in Call of Duty. So, like, two teams score off. You start in like a, a pre 
spawn area where you get a set amount of money to buy abilities or weapons or upgrades. And then you either save your money to play in later rounds because it's like a best of three kind of thing. Or you just like spend up and like dominate. Uh, you get extra money for certain actions in the game. Uh, everything that you don't use gets wiped at the end of a round apart from like character abilities. So if you buy like an ultimate or something and you don't use it, that comes across. Um, and respawn just kind of wants it to be like a, a training ground or like a, a practice ground for people who want to try out things and then like jump into apex legends proper. Um, and the Valkyrie character is kind of like the, the, obviously apex legends is tied to Titanfall, but it's like the biggest connection to Titanfall. So the character has like Titan esque abilities that she's kind of taken from a salvage Titan, like a rocket barrage and some flight. Um, her jetpack's super loud though. So like, yes, she can fly and she has that tactical ability, but you can hear her from like halfway across the map, it seems like. So like you're a sitting duck if you're not good. Um, and her father is Viper, who is one of the antagonists in Titanfall 2. He's one of those apex predators, which I can't remember, but uh, I've taken Respawn's word on it. I'm sure it's true. <laughs> Imagine if it was a lie and I'm just like peddling the lie. <clears throat> wouldn't be the first time uh and the other thing that i got to look at was resident evil village um which was like an hour of gameplay with capcom's um like pr speak kind of across the video so mm. it wasn't anything super new they were like oh here are the bad guys of the werewolves are called lichens they'll like attack you in packs and try to pick them off one by one but like looking at the preview it was almost like the you know, like in the old Assassin's Creed days when you'd have like a ring of enemies around you, but then like they would attack yeah, they you one at a time. Turn. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of like I that. Like that. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's going to be like that all the time, but that's what I got from the video. Um, okay. And I only got to view it, um, though two Resident Evil Village demos went up on PlayStation 4 and 5 while I was away, but they were at like the stupidest times ever. So even if I was at home, I probably wouldn't have played them. It was like three in the morning until 11 in the morning, Sunday night, Sunday, no, Monday morning, I guess. Yeah. For those. Did you play any of them? No, because they're all at dumb times, but they are, we can play it next week. Now that they've extended their plan B, which was let's do it another day again. And then they realized it was dumb and they got a little complaints and they forgot about basically all the regions, which are not America and Europe. Uh, so, which is probably much everyone, I suppose, but anyway. And it was confusing to begin with because the Resident Evil showcase like had all these different times and they didn't have like Australian Eastern. So I went with like, here's the time in Japan that I've translated mm. into Australian time. And it was like 8 p.m. Australian time, but we didn't get it then. So like, so Japan had it and then like at three in the morning, then we got to play later on. It was like, why? Like, that's, anyway, yeah. it was stupid. Dumb. So it was time demo fine, but it needs to be like at least three days. You can't do like, yeah. a, like whatever 12 hour period, whatever it was. So the next, the final Resident Evil Village demo is multi platform. All mm -hmm. the other ones have been PlayStation. Uh, it starts on the 2nd of May and it was going to finish on the 3rd of May, but now it goes all the way till the 9th. And I think it's like 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. But you have like a full proper week to play. You only have an hour worth of game time, I think. Running time for 30 minutes yeah um but watch this space because other resident evil village things are happening soon because it comes out on the 7th of may how exciting a game coming out that's actually quite exciting it's i been know a long time that's not and delayed kind of because some of yeah, it's well, delayed. it doesn't matter it's a game coming out in 2021 this year has been the year of completing your backlog so far because it's just been nothing and that's why I'm surprised that Sony is releasing Returnal like at the same time. Like there's been all this time to get away from Resident Evil 8, the only other game. And they're kind of like, no, nah, we'll just do it around. We want to do kind of like May as well. Like they could have released it two weeks ago. They could have released it a couple of weeks after. Oh, that would run into Ratchet and Clank. But like now it would have been great for it. So odd decision. Well, and <clears throat> like you were saying to me, uh, Resident Evil... No, sorry, Returnal is like one of those new fandangled current gen or like next gen, I guess, if you're trying to justify the pricing, like super gen. expensive game. So it's $125 for like a game by Housemark, which I'm sure is going to be good. But even like Resident Evil Village on PS5 is a hundred bucks. 
because it's Capcom. It's not first party. So it's 110 technically is Capcom's RRP. They've gone up 10 bucks. Sony's the only one who's gone up 25. They've gone up to 125. And I, I thought they might use a variable model. They might use like they've got a war Spider-Man style games are going to go 125, but then they might come in with a like a even if 100 is now their budget price for games like that. No, nah, they're just going all first party games at 125. I don't think it will sell well because of that. Uh, it just it doesn't have that AAA kind of allure to it. And I think people will just be put off because the discount price, like the, the cheap price on Amazon is like 109, which is it was 69 a few months ago. Every game launched at that price. It doesn't happen anymore. I, the drought of games might help it, but I think overall people will just kind of be like, eh, Resident Evil is cheaper and I know what I'm getting there. Uh, it's just a bit confusing for me. So did you say Resident Evil was 110? That's the no? RRP, yeah. Well, oh, you can get it on, I'm looking right now, sorry. You, you can get it on the PlayStation Store for 100 bucks. Oh, really? 95. Yeah. Is that and it's PS4, PS4 version? PS4, PS5. So it's it'll be that ah, thing where like, that upgrade. if you do switch between consoles, you'll have to go into like the menu or something probably because they don't support it and like upload your save okay. to then like download on, but it's, it's 100 bucks. Well, that's so interesting. A clear I, winner. I I'm looking at it right it. now. I assure you, I'm pointing at my screen. That you I think it see. might be the next. the The last gen is 100, and the current gen on disc is 110. Situation uh, might be a disc thing. Uh, Never buy discs, people. Don't buy discs. Yeah, I guess you can you can trade them in if you don't like it. No, it's a, it's 110 on every platform at EB Games. So weird, but it's 80 bucks at Amazon. That's where I pre-ordered. Or 81. So uh, that's my fair. Nice. Hmm. Um. And I've been playing games or listening to things. Not with sponsored, these. by the way. <laughs> Other <laughs> retailers are available. If you'd like yes. to sponsor us, Amazon, we're open. If you go and look at any Resident yeah. Evil Village post, uh, it does have a link to buy on Amazon, though, because it's cheap, but also we're affiliates. So if you buy it or want to buy it, go buy it via us and we'll get mm. like $0.002. Um, or don't bother because it's like really not worth it. Uh, like doing to give us affiliate. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm also with these things on my head i'm trialing the epos h3 wired gaming headset um, wired. that's old school yes i kind of like it though because it's you can connect it to things i found out mm. that playing playstation uh if you connect a headset to your playstation 5 at least it doesn't let you do audio to your tv and to your headphones which might not be okay. a problem for a lot of people, but if you're like you're recording videos and you need to have headphones on because you're listening for like an audio tell to find collectibles, if you plug in headphones, like the rest of the audio cuts out. So I've been like recording videos for something where it's just like dead silent because I definitely need to hear it in my ears like this, not from a TV. So it's kind of annoying. Um, these are good. They're $180. Um, they're very stylized. They look really nice. It's a non-detachable boom mic, um, kind of standard fare. They're really light, but the only problem I have with it is that the ear cups, because I have like giant Dumbo ears, like my ears kind of have to squish to fit inside. Um, the padding and stuff's really comfortable and they never feel heavy. I've had these on for like probably six or seven hours today. And like, they're not annoying me, but like my ear at the very kind of top is kind of oh, like yeah. getting a little sore from like the bend. Like it's kind of like bending a little bit to fit in. Um, but I can't imagine a lot of people have the same problem that I do with my giant ears. So if that's not a problem for you and you're looking for another headset alternative, because there's like 8 million thousand, um, these would be one to consider depending on your price point and the platforms that you use it on. It's wired, of course, so it works on most everything. And I think that's enough of me talking about headphones. Perfect. Yet Great. another headphone review on Survival. We're at about six this year. Put that on the box. I know, like, what the <laughs> hell? Jesus. Um, let's get into some news because a quick short re or a quick short Resident Evil is a good Resident Evil. I meant Friendly Fire Show. I don't know why I said that. I'm out of practice. Um, ben, E3 2021 is actually happening this year. We're back. We didn't Digitally. get to go last year. We do get to go this year from our own homes, exactly the same as everyone. We're already uh, there, Ben. Like literally, probably ugh. where we're going to be. Um, it's probably going to be terrible from the E3 side. But as we've said previously, go back like 100 episodes when we explained what E3 is. Like what I used to think it was and what it actually is is so different because... You know, you see, you watch the press conferences from home 
And that's what you think E3 is. It's not until you go that you realize that's kind of actually technically before E3. And then the event is this big trade show. Uh, and you kind of shuffled around meeting rooms and concourse all over the place. And that's the old school. That's what you used to read about in magazines. That's what we've been to many times. But from just a general player uh, tuning into E3 from home, they can do that virtually. That can be exactly the same. Nintendo hasn't done a live show for about five years. Yeah. Uh, well, and EA hasn't, but they kind of sort of attach it, like side loaded in. Yeah, like same. Activision dropped out before Sony's dropped out the last couple of years. Microsoft mm. is still kind of part of it, but they're doing like more of the Nintendo thing of controlling really their own message. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> It is I don't it know. Is. I don't know what it will be for us from uh, now that everyone's seen this. We would then on the go interview people, play bits and pieces, uh, see stuff that wasn't shown. That would be the content you'd put out. The stuff which wasn't just put online by the publishers, they can do some of that by video. They can do some, you know, Zoom chats and stuff. But I think it will be a lot more lackluster for us. And I think it's not really for us. I think they're going more for that general public as opposed to media coverage, which is fair enough. But it's, it's it's all they can really do. Yeah, well, and we'll we'll probably get some uh, developer interviews. Uh, hmm. What's that thing called? I can't remember now. Parsec is that what I'm thinking of? Um, oh, like yeah. re remote play of of some preview experiences. Who knows? Um, there's not a lot kind of going on yet. Um, we know that uh, Nintendo, Capcom, Microsoft, Take Two, uh, Warner Brothers, Koch Media, Konami, like they're all kind of taking part. Ubisoft's the only person, the only publisher who's announced when their Ubisoft Forward is going to be, and I totally forget when that is. Um, EA 2021, though, runs over some time in June. <laughs> I didn't put a date in my uh, news post that I'm trying to, like, frantically mm. read. Um, <clears throat> but they're, they're on, like, the first day, from what I remember. Um, and it will be interesting, I guess. We'll just get a whole bunch of I think, we'll get, a, I think we'll get a lot of information. We've we've had so such, such few announcements recently. Like we don't really like Nintendo's doing a couple of ports. Basically, uh, we've got no idea what Xbox plans are for releasing. They've got all these studios now, but they're not really releasing anything. I assume we'll get like a date for like Flight Simulator on Xbox, and Halo will be confirmed as yes, it's definitely coming. This is what it looks like now. It's uh, rumored that Starfield is going to get like a date. That would be and now, even and now gameplay that, would be big. So well, that would be, I mean, good too. be good too. Yeah. And like of course, this is the big the first big thing since the mm. Bethesda Microsoft acquisition. So that'll be interesting. Well, uh, Bethesda uh well, over the last few years at least had done their own E3 showcase. So like they to be fair, they struggled to fill the hour most of the time, but they did do their own. So condense that down to 15, 20 minutes of Xbox's hour, and that's gonna look a lot better than you know, dragging it out putting in Blink-182 for a bit of it, whatever they used to do. Uh, I was there actually when they did that. It was actually pretty good. Um, that looked but, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah such, a, such an elitist video game journal. <laughs> like, oh, it was Blink-182. Uh, we have to yeah. go. We had to go in person sometimes and, and run across a, a convention center to get to appointments and, and drink beer at night. And so, It was horrible. Yeah, uh, it was anyway. pretty far away, actually, but it was, it was good. Uh, yeah. So uh, Ubisoft Forward will be uh, at five o'clock in the morning, bright and early on the 13th of June, which is a Sunday. Uh, and as far as I, I still don't have dates anywhere. I don't know if maybe E3 is not confirmed proper dates and stuff yet, or maybe I was just a horrible reporter. Um, but it's hmm. it's around that mid-June point that we're always used to. Okay, we'll wait and see. I assume there, there's no real need to cram them all into one day like they used to for the, you know, they all did that, as I was just saying, to get in before the trade show opened. They could space them out over a week. They probably yeah. will do them still close together just to feel like it's the same. Well, that was uh, what happened last year. There wasn't an E3 at all, but it was kind of like, I think it was like the Steam Summer of Game. And there were all these like things and people just kind of coordinated over a week. And, mm. and it was kind of nice because like you had you had a whole bunch of video game stuff, but it was kind of like giving you some breathing space to like let yeah. Ubisoft have its moment. And then Sony had its thing and then Microsoft did and blah, blah, blah. So I'm down for that. It's a long week though. Like I'd rather just get like that like tedious like couple days of like not sleeping or like doing anything but typing at a keyboard but yeah anyway it'll be different at least it's back in some way we'll have some news to share uh and we'll kind of know what we're going to play later in the year because at the moment it is very little mm. yeah well uh 
I guess you could always go back to your PlayStation 3 or PlayStation Vita and download games from the PlayStation Store because, surprise, mm. Sony was going to can those things. And I guess over backlash uh, from people who are still actively on those platforms or people who are just like into software preservation, um, Sony backflipped and said that the PS3 and PS Vita stores will not be closing, which is good news. It was news. a big flip. It was now uh, Jim Ryan, the head of PlayStation. People are not liking him now over some of the decisions he's made this year. I've heard a few Don Matrick comparisons. Uh, Probably fair in the sense that he hasn't read the room. I don't think he's leading PlayStation in the same way that Matrick was going with the whole, you know, TV, TV, TV thing. That was because there was a rumor of PlayStation TV, something or other coming to PlayStation Plus. Uh, I don't think that panned out in the end. But yeah, it was just a classic not really reading the room at all, thinking no one cared about this and pissing off all of your customers, basically. So to their credit, they backflipped in the same way that Microsoft did when they announced the Xbox Live Gold price hike, another just miscalculation that was a horrible decision. And they're going to just pretend like it never happened. So at some point, these doors will close, probably just a bit soon now. Uh, the difference being, you can't play these games on your PS5. So Closing like the 360 game store, a lot of those games will play on your Xbox Series X, Series S. So that is why Microsoft has a reason to keep them going. Uh, PlayStation doesn't really, I'm not going to go back and play a PS3 game now. It's too hard. But I, I do now and again play a 360 game, not often, but now and again. And I like to have the ability to do it. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have mind if they did shut down, but I see why a lot of people were really up in arms about it. Yeah, well, and I don't know. Uh, so they are Sony is doing something along the lines of a TV thing. Uh, it's what's it called, the PlayStation Plus TV Pass or something like that. That's the one. It's trialed. It's being trialed for a year in Poland right now. It's like I think. Oh, the they did of, announce it. Today. Yeah, yeah, it came out like 20, okay. 25 like TV shows slash movies, like all Sony pictures, obviously. So things like Venom, Zombie Land, Double Tap other tv shows is this um, stuff i can get on like stan or netflix or one of the other 50 things i already have a lot of it yes and it's but like i guess it's like a free thing for playstation plus people where i suppose probably like from from a gameplay or a game players perspective i would mm. think sony would be better suited to try to go to like a game pass alternative they, they uh, where, where you're it. offering me more like video game things instead of like here's a movie that you could watch for free because you have playstation plus like i don't i don't care i have netflix i have stan i have amazon like i don't need tv through my playstation and i'm like yeah. i guess like some people do it but I've, i don't think i've ever 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 bought a tv show or a movie or rented them on like playstation video store or the xbox one like i just don't not me either. don't care <laughs> it's good for them Mm. Oh, I did go to a cinema for the first time in like a year and a half last week. What did you see? see? Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. I there was barely yet. anyone there. There were like six people there. So very COVID safe, like the safest place you can be. No one there. Because I went on like a Friday afternoon. Had yeah. the afternoon off, went to Mortal Kombat. Any uh, good? Yeah, it's, it's entertaining. The story is a bit all over the place, but the action, very good. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's a fun, just kind of let it be, watch the action, enjoy it movie. Uh, a bit gory, so be aware of that. Um, but yeah, enjoyable. It was just weird being in a cinema. It was weird watching a movie without having my phone and being like IMDb trivia, uh, or just like I'm I instinctively just like I'm gonna check Twitter in the middle of this movie. Like I'm just terrible at watching uninterrupted. So generation Y of me. Uh, but I forgot this two things I forgot about cinema. One, you can't do that, you need to just watch the movie. Two, very loud. I forgot how loud it is. Three, if you have to pee, you can't pause it like mm. can we just like can we just i just no can't do that too yeah. bad so it's different it's it's fun i do recommend it hopefully some more movies come out anyway that was a sidebar related to playstation oh, TV. i like it i like it mm. i haven't seen it yet we're, we're going sometime soon or it's like it's also on hbo max so like if i wanted to watch it from home i would be able to that's the thing i'm but, just saying yeah. good on the big screen very and then if face. i and then if i want to pee i don't have to worry about like missing anything i can just like pause it and get anyway um something that we've already known because i think we both got the update early um the xbox uh mobile app has been updated across the board so if you are the type of person who like us too obviously who like to go to your mobile app to look at achievements mm. to see what you don't have in a game or whatever now everybody has access to that it's not as good as it used to be, though, which is annoying, like on the old app, but at least it's like there. It wasn't there for a good long while 
what do you think about that then i have gone so the new xbox app looks better than the old one and you had to get it to set up your console or you were meant to that was the best way to do it um but then after setting up my console i never used it again because it was useless like it didn't have any function to it so putting achievements back in i'm back using the app it's given me a purpose to use it again it looks better the layout's nicer some great graphic design but the functionality is not as good as it used to be it's it's harder just to scroll through achievements um, and all the filters and stuff you had on the old app are now gone so still room for improvement but they have put back a core feature which was mind-boggling that they removed in the first place so i'm glad it's back yes there must have been a reason but they wouldn't tell us why um that's good that's a thing um mm. i guess sort of in the same vein and it's like a rumor or like a, a uh i forget what i i, I wrote this and i forget it because that was a while ago i think it's a patent or something sony could be potentially adding trophies into older emulated games so like uh, the playstation now service which we don't have is a good example like you can play old ps1 ps2 games and ps3 games i'm assuming on playstation now it used to be like a download to your device thing now it's like a streaming kind of thing like uh -huh. sort of in the vein of xcloud and stadia and stuff um and the patent was like we could add in new trophies in the playstation network system to like older games which i think is great and i think microsoft should look into on like old xbox games and stuff like if i could replay buffy the vampire slayer and get achievements i would be happy um okay if they do add this functionality it's probably not coming to buffy but any well it damn well better yeah well they should they all the xbox games which are back and pat from the original xbox they should do that like people yeah. probably play them now Sony have done for the PS2 games they re-released on PS4, like the GTA games, that type of thing. They did add a small amount of trophies, like all the Star Wars games that are released. You can play Super Star Wars on your PS4 and or five and get trophies from it. That's cool. Um, so they did when they re-released them, they did add it. But that's that's not playing the original game, PS2 game. That's playing a ported version over to an up res to 720 or something. So that's why they added them. Um, I guess they're talking about playing the original game emulated and adding it in that way. So even less work for them, which means more games can be put back out there. Exactly. Here, here's part of the patent. Generally, trophies are an important point of modern gaming. Of course they are. Um, however, old games don't have the capability to award trophies to player. Well, that's just criminal. Anyway, um, so I, I want that to happen and I want Xbox to uh, then feel they need to uh, follow suit. Uh, something that Xbox did following suit to PlayStation is uh, it's official now. It was talked about in that same backflip that Ben was talking about with the Xbox Live Gold pricing increase. Mm -hmm. um, not only did that not happen, Microsoft then said any free to play game like Call of Duty Warzone, Fortnite, Rocket League will no longer require Xbox Live Gold to play online. It took them a little bit of time, but as of now, there's like 100 plus or like almost 100 plus uh, games, almost 100 plus, around 100 games um, that no longer require Xbox Live. They're free to play properly, which is good, um, though I can yeah. imagine there's a lot of people who play games like that who don't already have like something like Xbox Live or Xbox Game Pass Ultimate to kind of like take advantage of xboxy stuff but if you don't now you don't have to worry about that expenditure it'll be kids you. playing fortnite basically and that's why i'm quite surprised that wasn't already the case i just assumed it was and for a company that's like oh we've got the proper console and we've got the cheaper one if you just want to get in entry level ridiculous they didn't have it like that already of course you would get a playstation because you can play fortnite without needing a subscription if you're 12 so uh dumb to not have it like that and they've finally rectified it Unless you have a cool uncle, because like all I do for my nephew yeah. now, any any Christmas, any birthday, I get him like I just top up his Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription because he gets there you go like like they added NHL 21 to Game Pass the other week, so it's like here's the newest hockey game. There's like a hunting game that he plays all the time. Like he does play Warzone, which I like. I was trying to get him to play something a little less war zone because he's 10 but like his dad said yes but whatever so like he got like the online capability and the games and it's like i didn't buy you a game but i bought you like 100 games so like have at it so anyway i digressed uh super mario party on switch it was released in 2018 october 2018 to be mm. exact it has uh updated itself this week april 2021 to uh include online multiplayer 
very Nintendo. <laughs> we are super late to the party, no pun intended, with a feature that you would just expect was there at launch and for some reason wasn't. Now, I actually do have this game. I haven't played it yet, though. I've had it for ages and I've just never had a party to have Mario Party at. Uh, and now I could play it online, I suppose. I never checked to see if it did have online play. I just assumed it would have. Should have known Nintendo. Of course, it doesn't have online play. Uh, I'm glad they did it ridiculously late. I didn't really understand why they bothered now. It would have made sense last year in like the middle. I suppose other countries aren't doing as well as us, but like mid-COVID pandemic to be like, oh, this game, which is all about getting your friends together, now you can do it remotely. Yeah. Maybe that is the uh, maybe that is the angle, actually. Um, it's too late. Yeah, like it's, it's too late for COVID. It's too late for like the life cycle of the game. It's it's like the way only too late. thing is, I will say maybe it isn't because the I saw a sales number for a few months ago just popped up somewhere and it sold like nearly ten million copies. It is unbelievably is one of the most successful games on Switch. Which I it made me think, why hasn't Nintendo released an update for this game? And now they must someone at Nintendo must have seen that too and been like, hang on a second, this is actually popular. Uh, let's keep it going. Because it is the type of game which does get played for years after, but not a lot. Um, but yeah, it, it's weird. It should have been there when it launched. It's, yeah, it's it's Nintendo. That's what they do. I took a look at my review and I still stand by it. Of Like, of course, it's a little bit s- s- skewed now because Super Mario Party does have online. But when they were both just like in front of each other on the couch experiences, mm. I still think 1-2 Switch is a much better like mini game Okay. Best. but i get like obviously you have to be in the same place to do that so if you want like a multiplayer kind of mini game thing and you are in different places maybe super mario party is the better option in that instance but i, I it think just, um, it takes so long the games take so long and some of the mini yeah. games are awful and some are good and like one two switch is like great across the board in my mind i would play mario party maybe once every second year with people and we only play like the 40 minute version like this short one and that's playing on 64 i don't think i've ever played in any other platform and it is fun i mean you have to have a group of people willing to commit hard i can see maybe the the two player i think there's a mode where you can play like two on one switch and two remotely on another one i think that'd be the only way it'd be fun everybody needs to have a joy con like a single joy con to play and you yeah, can do like combinations with switches you can do and like two v two v two uh, yeah. So like Claire and I oh, could yeah. play against you and Matt, which would be the only way it would be fun. Because if you had four people in four separate houses, I feel like it would just be, it'd be too slow. You need to also be on Discord because Nintendo Switch uh, Online is garbage. You've got to plug your headphones into your phone app. <laughs> like, come on, Nintendo. Exactly. Well, we're coming We're coming to your house in May. Mm. Maybe we'll play, If uh, there's probably not enough time. Maybe we'll play a 40-minute Super Mario Party game. Who Maybe. Knows? we. I, I do have four Joy-Cons, so it could be done. Yeah. No guarantees, but we'll see how we go. Yeah. Um, and in other news that doesn't really apply to Australia, but will eventually maybe, um, Xbox Cloud Gaming is now available to a select amount of people on PC and iOS via like a browser-based app that mm. circumvents things like the Apple App Store, which is cool. It doesn't apply to us because we're not one of the 22 supported regions. We're still in that like Android. Yeah, it doesn't X-Cloud work that well thing. here. It works okay, but um, not that well. But it's like cool steps to like think about what is what will yeah. what will be in the future. It's coming. It's uh, people straight away tested that you can play the PC version through the Edge browser on an Xbox Series X. Uh, you would not do that because obviously it's a way worse experience than just downloading the game that's also in game pass but you know just funny people also tried it on the switch browser and the switch browser is just like uh like i'm not a real internet browser i can't even display the tiles let alone launch a game uh so that's funny there you go i didn't know Mm. that that's that's funny um i stupidly took my computer and i have like an android emulator and i was going to try either like game pass no what's it called the xcloud preview program whatever on my yeah. computer because there's you not can... many games in it there's like maybe 20 in the preview kind i of would have played over. resident evil 7 again yeah, um right. or i brought my controller and i was going to see if i could connect remotely to my console and, and go that way but i brought an xbox series x controller and ios nor android via blue or via blue stacks anyway supported that controller up until like two or three days ago when ios 14.5 oh, okay. came out but yeah, so that's problem solved. If you want to try that with a modern controller, it's now supported on iOS devices. But uh, as of a week ago, it wasn't. You had to use an Xbox One controller or nothing. 
or like a PlayStation 4 controller. DualSense wasn't supported either, but it is now as well. So anyway. Okay. It's getting there. It, I think we're still a while away. So like playing here on the Android preview on like 5G Telstra, uh, sometimes it works well and sometimes it's like network problems and that can be in exactly the same location, the same amount of bars and it's just kind of laggy, still playable. Uh, yeah, there just doesn't seem to be any reason necessarily why. Um, and testing it on 5G is, I think, the only way to make sense because if you're at your house, why would you play on your own network? Like you're playing xCloud when you're away from your house. Yeah. Uh, so that's how I've been testing it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of like I wouldn't be willing to commit to streaming only at this point. It's just not quite stable enough. Future things. Mm, that's it. Um, we've already done this week or this episode, I guess, because it's not been this week, this period in delays uh the new watchdogs legion hero update is delayed till may instead of april and oh, five dear. nights at freddy's security breach which is a playstation 4 or 5 and pc game which was supposed to come out in 2020 and then early 2021 is now coming in late 2021 there will be no end to delays we'll let you know as they happen there's Ish. like nothing else even has a date right now but i, I guarantee you this a bunch of stuff will get maybe not date, but release windows at E3, and then they'll get delayed. They'll get like a coming summer 2021 or whatever that is in the Northern Hemisphere, winter, I suppose. And then it'll be like delayed till 22. So that will definitely happen for a bunch of stuff. It's just the way things are right now. Yeah. Um, until, until you have something, it might be delayed. And even if it does come out like Cyberpunk, it might be in a case where it should have been delayed. So yeah, it's, it's odd times. It is what it is. Um, anything else you want to talk about? I think that's it. Um, we are, what are we getting close to six months of these new consoles and they haven't yeah. really had any, any new games yet. We had the launch games. We've had a couple of cross-gen games. There's been very little release. So I'm excited that Resident Evil is here. That is cross-gen, but it, it doesn't matter. It's a new game for the new consoles. So um, I'm very glad that they both went super hardcore on back and pat. I don't know if they intended for a global pandemic and they knew we would have to play all our old games for months, but it's, I haven't really noticed because I've just been playing old stuff and it runs as if it's a current gen game and it doesn't really tell you that you're playing an old game and it, it runs better. Um, Xbox has added a bunch more stuff with the FPS boost. I think a bunch of EA games are now 120. 120, yeah. Um, if you want to play them like that, they do run better. I think some of them drop resolution, so, but at least you get to choose. That actually works pretty well, that feature. Uh, so yeah, I haven't really noticed, but it would be nice to play some new stuff on these consoles that cost a lot of money. Yeah, I I because... All that Fallout 76 playing, I like hadn't finished. I got a hundred percent in Fallout 4 up until the last DLC, and then it was like tedious. Mm. I'm like, I'm not gonna do this. But like the loading times are so quick now. Like I had to do so many missions, and it was like you read the comments and like true achievements of people who did it like on the Xbox One. They're like, oh my god, this is just like they should call yeah. this quest line like loading screen time and it's like instantly fast travel instantly load into something so at least there's that i guess but yes new games would be better and preferred and we we get some soon so that's exciting exactly. and we'll be able to talk about some of them probably next episode or at least you will i'm not sure when the next episode will be and when the launch of i could check that but anyhow two weeks from see. now and i can definitely oh, talk yeah. about resident village evil village by then because it will be past the release date so not that i can confirm if i'm playing it now mm. Uh, but I'll talk about it later. I'll be able to talk about it if my Australia Post Amazon delivery arrives on time, which it definitely will not. So probably not. We'll have to see. Uh, cool. Uh, how do we find you on the internet and stuff? Uh, ben underscore Salter on Twitter and yourself. S right AU. And mm. if you like this, I hate doing this stuff, but we should do this, Ben. Because um, yeah, when, yeah. when we do it, it actually works. So if you like this show, tell a friend, go to your podcast uh, platform of choice and give us a rating. Mm. I know it's tedious and like every podcast in the history of the universe asks you to do it, but help us out. We don't have a Patreon, so we're not going to try to like charge you money for listening to us. So no. you're just getting pure unbridled. Maybe we're here this week. Maybe we're taking a month off friendly fire show and that's we're perfect. back in two weeks we're not taking any time off we're here we are full schedule every fortnight until we forget to tell you that we had took it taking another break uh not for ages but definitely not next time next time no. we're going to be here no. we're here to talk about resident evil 8 and probably something else sounds good all right mm. bye until then. <laughs>